everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 352. It's December 9th, 2018, and, um, uh, yeah, I think I kicked the crafting slump, I guess you could call it. Um, I feel like I did. Remains to be seen if it sticks. Um, <laughs> coffee always helps though, right? It's, um, B52 from San Marco Coffee today. So first thing, um, I only have one thing to tell you that's actively being worked on, and that is the stained glass blanket, take two. This is the Juggling Hexes pattern by Wendy Harbaugh. I'm crocheting it using leftover socks that rock lightweight scraps, lightweight and medium weight scraps, and then the black around it is the Loopy U Solid Series in black. And I'm still working on squaring off the one side of that massive triangle that I had. But, um, so my goal, I've exceeded my goal of one hexagon a day, thanks to the kids. <laughs> so I decided I just, if I'm gonna get it done, I have to work on it, right? I can't just let it sit for a month at a time. So using an F hook, which I believe I have written down somewhere, is a, I didn't write out show notes this week because I wanted to get to it, a 3.75 millimeter hook. Yes. Yes. And I need to find where my progress keepers went. I know I have progress keepers from Meliabella on this desk or somewhere. It's buried just so I know where I'm at. This is the corner. I've been working on. So two weeks ago I had stopped with this one, this kind of, I call it kind of baby poo yellow, I can't remember what the color actually is. I did this one next which I believe is Chanticleer, then a paler shade of ST1 and marbles. The kids have been helping me pick out the centers. Uh, I'm not sure on this one, it might be, that is a, okay, the, the color's way off, I'm sorry. It might be purple rain. It's not blue, there's no blue in it. Oh my goodness, terrible. This one that Tara picked, because she wanted pink, is Happy Go Lucky. Uh, Field and Stream, that I did Hubby's, one of Hubby's last Paris' socks out of. Gabe had to pick that because Tara picked a pink one, so there had to be a green one. This one on the end was the next pick, Soctopus. And then, again, Tara picked a pink one, which Soctopus is right back here as well. Uh, so Gabe had to pick a green one, and I believe, oh, who? I believe this is County Clare, which Gabe also had to shove his little finger through the center, so the center hole is slightly larger than the other ones because of that, because he was sitting there twirling it around on his finger. So eight centers added on. And all I have left to do, so that's like the end, the last row. So in order to finish out this row, I need to do one, two, three, four, and then this corner will be squared off. So, yay, this is gonna be long enough to definitely be like a, on me at 5'10", at least an armpits to come down over my feet and cover my toes. So, so excited. When, well, once I square off the other side, it will be, but definitely lap blanket sized and let me try to scoop back here enough so you can see. Let's see how far back do I have to go? Probably quite a ways. So let's go on this edge because this is the long edge. So it's this side, my left, which is probably your right over here where I'm waving my hand. That's the squared off side. And then this one comes out, you can kind of see how it slips, okay? So that's where we're at. I'm to the point, so when Sarah had been here, she did a ton, pretty much all of my sock, my sock yarn <laughs> STR scraps that I had. Uh, she went through and crocheted a whole bunch of hexes for me because she ran out of projects of her own and these were quick and easy. And then she kind of bundled them up for me. And this stitch by Jess Lou, the TARDIS bag, was chock full, 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 
when she left. Like we couldn't have crammed any more in. I don't think we, I, I can't remember if we counted or not, but there had to have been at least a hundred hexes in there. And I counted before I came down, I have 16. Plus one in the bag with the hook because Gabe picked one out last night and I just didn't get it put on. So I have 17 hexes left to join out of the first set. So yay. Progress. Huzzah. So that's the only thing that's actively on my needles because I have an FO for you. For that, I have to pull these out. Pull out this bag because last night I finished what's going to end up being my one and only Christmas present that I'm knitting this year. These are the socks for Sarah for Christmas, her annual, I should say biannual socks that I knit for her because I knit her a pair for her birthday every summer too. So these are the Geronimo socks for Sarah. And they're done. I finished them last night. The ends are woven in. The pictures, uh, or pictures, <laughs> I haven't taken any pictures while I've been knitting these socks because I've knit them mostly at work. Uh, the pattern is a 72 stitch top down sock with a heel flap that I added in this little cable detail on the side and it goes all the way down either side of the foot. And I made it so the cables twist in toward the top of the foot as they go down. Easy almost mindless, but you have to pay enough attention every five row, fifth row to do a cable t two stitch cable twist. They're done. I can't tell you when I started them because my phone was almost dead, so I left it upstairs charging and my computer's in the process of restarting. But I do know <laughs> I knitted out Into the World. It is their, whoop, their Manchester sock which is their 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. The colorway is called 11th Hour. And like I said, the color is very, very off. I knitted it using a US 1, 2.25 millimeter needle, Magic Loop. Actually, that's not bad, a little blue. Hang on, let me do something here. It's actually not too bad, a little dark. It's got this gorgeous, teal blue and green and it's a Doctor Who colorway so the rest of this is going with Sarah this will not be joining the blanket because it's not socks that rock but it will go to Sarah so she has plenty for darning I still need to wash them I didn't want them to still be wet when I recorded today so yay Christmas present done ha <laughs> ha I think I did those within a month month and a half if I remember right so as of right now I don't have anything actively on the knitting needles. I have crochet projects. Oh, for everyone who was wondering, I did find the other, um, the other six snowflakes. So today is going to be spent um, starching these bad boys. There's number one. I started making these in January of 2016. Oh my goodness. Let's see, number two, slightly larger. Those were February. Number three, also in February, slightly bigger. February, March, 2016, there's more. They look so sad and droopy, but once they're starched, they'll be beautiful. March of 2016, there's number five. Number six, so we're gonna whip through these kind of fast. Number seven, slightly more structured. Number eight is a sad shriveled mess. <laughs> Number nine, a little more structured again. Number 10, all crinkly. There's 11, sadly needing a stiffening with some starch. And number 13, I didn't weave in the ends on a lot of these. I'm debating what I'm gonna do with that. And I know I can hear my mom in my head saying, weave in the ends. And I kind of just want to starch them and then just cut the end off because they're starched. They're not gonna come undone, right? Shortcut, if I starch them. 
<laughs> Got the bottle of starch sitting here. It's Aline's Fabric Stiffener and Draping Liquid. Dries clear. It is tintable and it can be thinned. So I can add it up to a half and half mixture, which I might do because the last time I remember using this, it was really, really thick and ended up almost like making it too stiff. Like I, it was like I'd painted them with glue. I couldn't see the the stitches or the definition. So we'll see what I do. Can't even get the lid off. Okay, we'll work on that later. <laughs> but those. The six that were missing were all in the other little bucket bag that Natasha Tashbalaz had made for me. It has a lovely fun lining. It has little wiener dogs on it. So the six were sitting next to the chair the whole time. The active ones are in the TARDIS one that Amy Froggy Monkey made me. I'm so lucky. I've got so such wonderful friends and people that I know to gift me such beautiful things that I can't make myself. So. Uh, so we had an FO. We had a lot of progress on a blanket. And now I'm kind of at a loss of what to work on. I've already informed hubby he will not be getting socks for Christmas, even though I have it picked out and wound. Might start working on it just to have something. Uh, I'm tempted to start another sweater for me, but I don't know. That's more brain space than I have right now. So yeah, that's really it. That's everything I have for you guys this week. I don't want to do any questions because we're getting down to like the last few, actually. Well, my computer's not fully ready to restart yet, so let's go. Why not? Let's go over. If you have anything you want to ask me, go over to Round the Twist. There's a note, uh, a thread stickied at the top of the board called Any Questions. Uh, if you go in there, you can ask me anything that you would like with within reason. Um, so we're going to do one from Melchrist, who is uh, on Ravelry with Melody. Uh, she says, I wanted to ask about your cross-stitching. I've got an entire DMC wooden case full of floss. Lucky. Uh, so I'm thinking of doing a few cross-stitch and embroidery projects. Anywho, I remember my mom cross-stitching when I was a child. I, of course, had a few projects along with her. I always remembered her beginning and ending her stitching with large knots. I noticed that you and a few other podcasters have smooth backs to your finished pieces. I was wondering how you anchor your stitches and finish them to achieve that flat, flawless effect. Also, you mentioned washing your final project. I don't remember that my mother ever did that step. Could you explain your washing process? Thanks. Okay, so let me pull out... One of my cross stitch things that I still have over here that has not been framed, even though it's been finished for like you know almost a year. <laughs> the Christmas Town. This was from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It was one of I think it was last year's holiday mystery stitch along. This, you guys all remember this? Lovely thing. Uh so let me flip around and then we're gonna get up close and personal with the back here. So this is the back of my stitching. So, Mel, Melchrist, the way that I start mine, uh, I believe this is 18 count Aida. I do my stitches what they call a two over, two over one full cross. So, um, I have two strands of embroidery floss. They come, when you pull apart the DMC thread, there's six strands. I use two at a time. And you can do that one of two ways. I split mine, like pull off two strands, pull off two strands, pull off two strands. Uh, other people will pull off one strand and double it over. And the way they'll start is they'll pull their thread almost all the way. This is terrible to do without like a tutorial. But they'll pull their thread almost all the way through the fabric. And underneath there will be a loop. And then poke their needle down where they want into the hole that they want it to make the first leg of the cross and go through that loop. So that will be how they start. Um, and it will catch and just hold itself because you went through a loop. Uh, the way that I was taught, that my mom always taught me, using the two strands so you have an end and then the other end going through your needle, I pull mine all the way through, leave enough to catch um, like two or three or four stitches on the back. So let me see if I can find one. Um, of course now I can't find where I 
buried my ends. Okay, let's go up here to... And this is going to be awful. There we go. To this little, the back of the light bulb there. So, you can't really see where I started, but you can see rather than tie a knot, see how I came up on this side and then went through the green at the top and you can see the little tail sticking out just a little bit there and then I snip it close. So basically I just run it underneath a few other stitches that happen to be nearby. They might be the same color, they might not. And that's how I anchor it at the end. And when I start at the beginning, I'm just holding the tail at the back like with my finger. And when I'm making my crosses, I'm crossing over that flattened piece of thread to anchor it in place. So that's how I do mine without using um, any knots. It's how I've always done it, how my mom taught me <laughs> I've always done it. Uh, and I try not to travel too much, but you can see places where I traveled a bit of a distance to get to where I needed to go. Washing. Um, I wash mine pretty much the same way that I do all my knits. I throw it in the sink in some like tepid water. Now this one, this particular kit had a couple different uh, bits. I think it was, yeah, the darker green and then the red that makes up the word toys. And also the door, you can see how there's variegation. Those were actually hand dyed um, skeins of floss. So I actually rinsed those before I even used them, like rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and made sure there was no dye runoff. Um, and then when I was all done with the piece, because the fabric was also hand dyed, I put everything, and I've been using it for months, hand oils. Your hands, you might wash your hands, but your hands are constantly producing oils that can attract dirt and dust and whatever. Um, I put just a teeny bit of soak in the sink, a lot less than I'd use with knitting um, with yarn. And uh, just some tepid water let it soak for a little while. I did have a shout color catcher in there as well, just in case, and nothing came off, but I was worried. Um, and then take it out, lay it flat on a towel, uh, sandwich it in between a couple towels, roll it up just like you do with knitting, and then take a, one of the slightly damp towels, keeping it in there, and I actually pressed it with, a, with my iron put it stitches side down, and then once it was almost dry, putting it on a dry towel, stitches side down, and I just lightly ran the iron over the top. It really made the stitches then pop up that had been squished by the hoop that I'd been using, and it just really um, made everything pop and just look beautiful, and now I need to take it to the store and get it framed, which I haven't had a chance to do. But hopefully by next Christmas, <laughs> that done so we can hang it up in our house or display it somehow. So yeah, um, I hope that helps. Hopefully um, that will help. The other nice thing about the washing process, it re might remove any, it removes any creases, especially if you're using like a standard hoop versus a Q-snap. Um, but even the Q-snap can kind of mush your stitches down when you're um, stitching. So um, hopefully that helps. If not, um, you know, let me know. Uh, and I had someone else ask, you can always message me over on uh, Instagram as well. My Instagram name, I believe, is alcariel23, A-L-C-A-R-I-E-L-2-3 on Instagram. Um, I'm just alcariel over on Ravelry. Uh, please, if you have questions, we're down to the final two on the Any Questions thread, and I kind of like answering them. So... I'll let you guys go, and until next week, happy knitting.